Well, hello again, friends. Uh, today we have an interview with uh, retired Garda Kevin Taylor uh, in respect of the fact that a couple of weeks ago Kevin went to a court appearance where he was being falsely accused of a particular assault and when no evidence was provided to prove that assault then surprisingly Kevin found himself being found guilty of another assault that wasn't even on the charge sheet. Now this is just another typical example of the nonsense and the stupidity that goes on in the Irish courts under the guise of justice. It's anything but. Please listen to the story. So, uh, hi Kevin, welcome to the Integrity Ireland uh, new mobile trailer. Thank you Stephen, yeah. pleasure to be here. Lovely, thanks Kevin. So, um, we read in the Roscommon Herald last week that you were convicted of a Section 2 assault. Yes, that's right. Uh, was that conviction lawful, no, Kevin? No, it was not, no. Okay, so what would you say was the, the most obvious improper part of that conviction? Well, the fact that I was convicted of something that I wasn't even charged with. ...incident where I, where I was trying to actually help someone who was being assaulted by three, three of these trespassers uh, camouflaged as security guards. They used it to convict me of another alleged offence even though there was no complainant and no paperwork or summons for the charge. So you're saying you were charged with something that you didn't do? That's correct, yes. But, well, the judge can't do that, can he? No, he can't, but that's what he's done. So, what in fact were you actually convicted of, Kevin? Well, I was convicted of assault for trying to pre prevent an assault. Can you understand that, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Convicted okay. of assault for trying to prevent an assault. Actually prevent an assault, assault yeah. yeah. Okay. Because three of these trespassers had set upon one of my friends at Falsk. Yeah, and we can see that clearly uh, in the video and the stills that we're putting up here. Let's start moving them out now. That's pinch together, come on. But then again, Kevin, d didn't the Roscommon Herald say that you assaulted uh, Ian Gordon specifically? The, the same man who accused you of, excuse me, but grabbing his testicles. That was the original charge, wasn't it? Just right, uh, yes. did say it was Ian Gordon. But as you, you can see, um, that's not him that's in the video, um, because according to his own girl statement, he was rolling around on the ground in pain, uh, clutching his privates, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So did, did that particular incident, the, uh, you know, the alleged grabbing of his testicles, did that ever happen, Kevin? No, it didn't. The first I heard about that uh, was in March 2019, three months after, uh, after the event, after the, the event uh, in, in question. Now, a couple of quick points of clarity for those of you who may be a little bit confused or who are not familiar with the whole story. The first incident that Kevin is referring to is the uh, encroachment by these mercenaries uh, from the north of Ireland onto the property ostensibly to enforce a court order. Now there, there will be more detail uh, that you can uh, research online about this but first of all there was no valid court order. Secondly, the county registrar, who's also the sheriff, who gets a p um, poundage commission from the bank for each rep repossession, he was supposed to be there. They claimed in their statements that he was there. He wasn't there. And thirdly, the um, mercenaries that you see here were unlicensed and had no business being on the property. Clearly on that first occasion, Kevin is seriously assaulted and injured by these uh, mercenaries. Now, five days after this event, a gang of unknown people uh, returned in the middle of the night and set about taking back possession of the property. It made headlines all across the world. Uh, a couple of interesting points that you don't hear about a lot in the media is that weapons, guns, were found in the vehicles uh, of these mercenary security guards 
and uh, apparently they disappeared with such alarm that some of them ran out of the building even without their shoes. Uh, so these are the two different incidents uh, that have to be understood in context of what's going on here with this attempt now to prosecute Kevin af after the event, after the second repossession event took place, uh, the chaotic event where everything was set up in flames and so on. Uh, in other words, please understand there was the first incident where Kevin is definitively and obviously assaulted. Then there's the second event which then triggered a necessary response by the authorities. They had to be seen to be back in control and it was after that event, several weeks later, that these trumped up charges against Kevin came to light. Yes, so the, the original event happened in December of the previous year, correct? That's right, yes, yeah. yes. And this was in March, so this was the first that, that you heard about it. But surely yeah, you were interviewed or, or notified of the allegations against you, weren't you? I was notified three months afterwards um, by telephone. Three months after, that was the first I uh, The guards just called you up by the phone to tell you that the DPP was about to prosecute, is that, that is correct? correct? That's the way it was done, yes. Well, because the file, on, the file back was a uh, prosecutor and me not knowing anything about it. Oh, well, this is utterly bizarre, is it not? Um, so, um, so what happened to your original allegations and the proofs that we can see on the video uh, that you were actually assaulted, you were the one that was actually assaulted and beaten up by the security personnel. Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! Very disturbing, uh, considering as well that you're a retired guard yourself, uh, Kevin. So, um, how could the judge convict you of a crime without someone actually making a complaint? He can't, but uh, as you can see, the law doesn't matter anymore when the banks of the state are involved. Yes, yeah, no, I agree, I agree. I've read the uh, guard statements, Kevin, and uh, they're all over the place. Uh, can you tell us, as a retired guard yourself, was proper procedure actually followed here? No, it, it wasn't. Uh, the statements were taken were not taken in the correct order, and they were taken uh, weeks apart. I mean, Ian Gordon's statement should have been the first statement that, that should have been taken. Yet his statement is the last. It was taken on the 29th of January, 2019, and the first, the last statement that should have been made should have been um, the investigation officer's statement. Okay. That's Sergeant in the daily, and that was taken on the 18th, 19th of December 2018, five weeks before in Gordon's statement. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, because of course it's uh, it raises the suspicion that there might be some collusion. Of course, I, I, I would agree with you. I would I would be in that thinking that way along them lines as well. Okay. Um, as I understand it, Kevin, um, files were sent to the DPP. Now, this would have meant that your files uh, and your allegations against the people that clearly assaulted you yeah plus this other um uh, alleged assault where yeah. you, you supposedly grabbed mr gordon by the you know what's yeah 
Uh, what was the result of those files going to the DPP? Well, before I answer that question, I want to explain sure. that my statement that was made on 12th of December 2018 was completely independent to the um, discharge of uh, Section 2 against St. Gordon. My statement was concerned only about the assaults that were made against me and included a hospital report as well. Okay, yeah, because well, obviously... It didn't include the hospital report, but it gave the Gardaí permission to uh, obtain the hospital S report. So they had plenty of evidence of the injuries that you sustained, the fact that you had to be taken to hospital and so on. But of course, in that statement, because you didn't know anything about the allegations by Mr Gordon, which only came down the tracks three months yes, later, yes. Yeah, of course, you didn't mention it in your statement, no. right? Okay. I so I would like to include as well yeah. that the statements made by the Gardaí were made on the 18th and 19th of... Uh, December 2018, which will be shortly after the incident on the 16th of December at Falls, where there was yes. a, you could say a big bone fire. Yeah, oh, well, well actually that's really important Kevin, I think everybody needs to understand this. Um, uh, the conviction you just received at the Strokestown Court, that was pertaining to, first of all, an allegation that you had assaulted this Mr. Gordon in yes. a particular specific way, that's right, but yes. that charge got thrown out because yes. there's no evidence to support it, correct? That's right, yes. Right? And then the judge just invented a second charge based on the video evidence of you trying to defend one of your colleagues who was being assaulted by the security guards. By the trespassers. Yeah, well, trespassers. Yes. This, this is astonishing, Kevin. Well, that's, that's the justice you get in the courts these days. And in the meantime, your well, complaint against the people who had assaulted you has, has been completely ignored and the DPP has gone ahead and issued instructions to prosecute you for something there is no evidence of. Yes, that's right. And did not even give you the opportunity to put in a defence statement to that particular allegation. That's correct. And I, I would like to add um, that the, the three statements, uh, the statements made by the two Gardaí and Aidan Devlin, there was no ref reference whatsoever to an assault against Ian Gordon. You'd wonder what these statements, that's the Guardian statement and Aidan Devon's statement and my own statement, were they sandwiched together to create a new file? Well, well we, we, know, we, we know the history of so many other cases, Kevin, where very similar things have happened. But just for clarity for the, for the viewers uh, w watching in, Kevin, if I could say it like this, there were two incidents out in uh, Fox in Strokestown. The first incident was where the security guys came to try and take possession so-called security. Yeah, well, sorry, right. you're, you're calling them the trespassers. Yes, yes, yes. Where they came to get possession of the property. Yes. Um, and then a few days later, that's when you were assaulted. And then a few days later, um, some unknown uh, individuals took repossession back in the now very famous uh, incident that was blasted around newspapers all over the world. And it was the, the statements um, that were taken by the guards, sorry, uh, about the first incident happened after the second incident. So um, it does appear that there was an urge then for them to start documenting what had happened but still they didn't include this alleged assault against Mr Gordon. Would that be correct? That is right, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's right, yes. Uh, that there was actually firearms found in the vehicle. Could you just, uh, I know you weren't there yourself Kevin, but could you just, for the listeners, just explain a little bit um, about what, what you know about that incident? Well to be honest I don't know a lot. But what, uh, what I do know is that I had received a tow cap boot and a sap glove. Now, people don't understand what a sap glove is. A sap glove is a, is a glove made out of steel to, uh, to inflict as much injury as possible on a person when that person is hit with it. All right, okay. And, and this Ian Gordon has used these and several. He has some reputation. He's used it in Balbriggan up in Dublin on uh, Gordon Smith, where he, he put uh, Gordon Smith unconscious. This is the, um, Gordon is the uh, the soldier, the Irish soldier, isn't he, who was also assaulted in the courts by our uh, famous friend Michael McGrath from the Bridewell. That's be the man, yeah. yeah. He also, I believe this Ian Gordon, in Shrewl in County Mayo, was had an eviction, pulled out a woman by the head, by the hair of the head from, from the, the house. No, this is the man, that Ger the so-called Gerdy, Gerda Shea Corner, are defending. Yes. And he has an, another, he is involved in another two years um, eviction below in Cork, I think it's in Provoy. So, I mean, 
what are these Gardaí, are they Gardaí or what are, are, they, are they members of the Gestapo over it? Well, uh, hold on a minute, Kevin. Now, are you telling me that even since these shocking incidents, the two of them, you know, the attempted eviction first, yeah. uh, or bungled eviction, let's call it, plus the repossession of the house uh, by uh, whoever that, that did it, um, that even despite and all the furore that's happened over this, are you telling me that this man is still actively employed or engaged in repossession work or so-called repossession work unlawfully in this state? Tell that he still has his own security in the six counties. Up in, uh, okay, up in the north. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just going to play devil's advocate here for a minute, Kevin. Right? Um, for whatever reasons that the Irish authorities. Uh, farmed or the banks or whoever was involved farmed out this repossession work is there any chance that they were just ordinary guys trying to do a job that they've been um, licensed to do by the courts and it just sort of all went wrong no I wouldn't say so to me there were most of it in, in that line anyway and if you should take this this is a burnt out sort of sap hmm. no can I just his look can I hit again this chair? Yes, yes. See the steel that's in there? Yes. No, that's what they were using on the day in, in Falsk. So what you're holding up there, can you turn it around, Kevin, for the camera? All right, we can see the bottom part, and even if I reach over here and just tap it myself, certainly there's there's metal and plastic components here. They're clearly all melted. So was this uh, one of the items recovered out of the fire that's afterwards? That's right, yes. Okay. Yes. And it's also recovered was, as I can show you, this is a, a steel, S yeah, steel ca steel toe cap boots. Toe yes, toe ca cap boot. Which yes, I, I got several kicks up in front of the sergeant daily, and uh, mind you, I could feel them for a couple of days afterwards. But that's what they were wearing. Yeah. So um, you can feel it there. Steve. Yeah, if you can hold it up now to the camera there, Kevin, that lets people see it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, no, I, I felt it. Uh, I know it's it's a genuine heavy solid uh, steel yeah. cap boot, and nobody would enjoy being kicked by those it says it's clearly on the side actually stainless steel so um yeah all right kevin so all right well we've put that that uh, question to bed these people were clearly ready and willing for violence uh, there's no doubt about that oh, yes. uh, because of course when anybody should think about this if there's a legitimate valid court order um 99 people out of 100 are going to accept it because that's the law Yes. And I, I'm, I'm suggesting, Kevin, and of course you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know, uh, for example, I know Fintan Murphy, the local county registrar, and we mustn't forget that he's the one who orders the repossessions of many of these houses Absolutely. and then goes on to collect a poundage or a percentage of the value of the re repossessed property from the banks in his role as the sheriff. Um, so when they when they they knew they were going to have perhaps some difficulties here but i'm still very puzzled that the guards would take an active role um against an irish family with northern irish uh, let's call them paramilitaries yeah. or whatever or security personnel um coming down onto onto irish property it's it's astonishing well, what they can't understand is why is Ian Gordon being so protected by the Gardaí? And I often ask myself, has the house got anything to do with this? So would, 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 they, would they have known each other at some stage uh, as a group in, like, in Northern Ireland? Well that's, well, that's an interesting speculation, Kevin. Um, but um, I gather that you, you know, in the process of trying to serve papers and, and the like, you actually went out looking for uh, their addresses and stuff because again somewhat bizarrely the normal information you'd expect to see on summonses and court documents and everything just simply isn't there for some reason they're being allowed to present court documents into the court and statements without actually identifying where they live well the only address I have for Ian Gordon is the address that was given on the Garda statement by, uh, taken by Sergeant Emma Daly and that address is Garda Station Dundalk I don't even know what age he is because the age he gave on the statement was just over 21 years. So Inga Gordon, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, lives at the Garda station in Dundalk County Road and he's, he's over 21 years, whether he's 2100 or 22,000 years, I don't know. Well, uh, I suppose it, it would be a bit too much to presume that he might be in jail. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I, as far as I can see, it's only decent people that's jailed in this country. <laughs>
Not Very good, Kevin. Very good. Um, I, I read those Garda statements, Kevin, and I, I was a little bit, uh, well, when I say confused, perhaps you can explain this to us. Um, Sergeant Daly uh, presents himself as being at the scene uh, for operational reasons and to ensure there wasn't a breach of the peace. But he didn't seem to be doing a very good job on that day, did he? No, he was responsible for that eviction to be carried out in a lawful, peaceful manner. And that's not what followed up. Because, well, first of all, there was no county register there made an eviction, shall we say, lawful. Okay. He was, he was absent. And we had no appointed court messenger appointed by, we had no, we say, appointed court messenger appointed by the county register following a writ from the f finance minister. Right. So uh, if I could stop you there a second, yeah. Kevin, again, just so that it's clear for everybody watching in. Um, I read the, the statements by the guards. Yeah. And they definitively said that the, the county registrar was there and court messengers were there. Well, were they or were they not? Any court, there was one or two court messengers there, but they had no authority whatsoever to be there. All right. So you're telling us then that uh, in the, the video footage of the, the first incident yeah. uh, out in Falsk, you can actually see a couple of these court messengers. You can, but they are not. They have no authorization but whatsoever. They weren't to qualified to be there. To okay. a court order. So, uh, is there uh, footage anywhere of Fintan Murphy being there? Our no. notorious. How could he, how could have footage of Fintan Murphy being there when he said that he wasn't there? All oh, right. No matter how yeah. you argue that he was there, there's no he wasn't footage. There. He wasn't there. So, so ultimately, the the whole process was unlawful. Would that be fair? That is a hundred percent right. Well, at this point, uh, Kevin, I'm going to put up on the screen here for uh, the, the viewers uh, the asseveration that we produced um, when you and your colleagues were first put in jail for alleged contempt of court. And it's absolutely clear that the, the circumstances of the so-called eviction at Falsk were completely and utterly unlawful from start to finish all the way through, not to mention the fact that the, well, I will generously call them security personnel. No, I could, uh, <laughs> I could there were trespassers, there were no license whatsoever to cover their actions. Well, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more, Kevin, about the, these men that came on the property. Now we've seen from the video we can see that they're in sort of let's call them sort of security type uniforms, paramilitary type uniforms. Um, they're it, you know they, they, the man in the brown jacket is yeah. clearly in charge. What's his name? Aidan Devlin. Oh Aidan Devlin okay so he's the man who's in charge. I gather he runs an agency called Trinity Security Trinity or something assets. of that now yeah, Trinity Assets. So basically he hired a group of men to come and do this work. What can you tell us about those men, Kevin? Well, what I would like to say, uh, first of all, that Ferdinand in the day he said he was over operational matters. Well, I think this, his first, he was there to prevent, uh, number one, his prior duty was to prevent a breach of the peace. And you can see clearly from photographs that he, he failed to do that. Yes, absolutely. Number two, he should have vetted these people. He should have looked for a, a security license, which did not, which the people, which they have been they have been convicted afterwards in the courts for not having a security license. Oh, is that so, Kevin? No, that's, that's right. Yes. So, so when you say they were convicted, so who took the complaint against these? Um, it the would be the PSA, the, the the private security association. Oh, I see. So once the, once it got broadcast in the mainstream media, the the private security association looked into the credentials of these guys and came to the conclusion that they were they had no right or authority to be there. Well, uh, Even if there had been uh, a valid court order, they still shouldn't have been there. No, because uh, they have uh, these. Secure, if they were valid, they have no. They have no right to be at an eviction. Gotcha. Security firm. Gotcha. Having said that, the Sergeant Daly should have uh, visited these people as well, because um, there was at least one, if not more, was already in front of the courts on criminal charges. You know that person. This one of these trespassers. Yes. So no yes. way I could call them secure. Yes. And. Um, I'd also like to include that some of these people were former British soldiers, former members of the U also Defence Regiment, possibly loyalist parish of militaries. Gotcha. So the Gardaí, as an agent of the government, were actually violating the Good Friday Agreement by bringing, escorting these trespassers 
the which included former British soldiers, former UDR members, and probably former lawyers and militaries, to evict a Catholic family in, in the this, this is appalling. It's very appalling. Yes, I and know. It has, I think it should has to be brought across. It's it's almost it's almost so shocking, uh, Kevin, that it's it's literally hard to believe. But um, as we can see here. Um, I'm looking here at um, a newspaper article about uh, Mr. Gordon, the man who claims uh, you assaulted him without any evidence of it, and it's clear that Mr. Gordon is um, not held in very high esteem uh, in the, let's call it, the security community, um, I, and I'll quote here, he's a joke in the security industry and he's scraping the barrel with some of the people he's relying on etc etc so um, clearly um, whoever hired these people didn't do their homework um, and he's not the only one uh, there's another gentleman here yes. uh, visible uh, who is proudly heard boasting when he's reprimanded by one of your colleagues for um, going up against his colleagues he's told uh, how dare you you know and what are you doing um, victimizing other Irish people like yeah. this and he proudly boasts that he's uh, British not Irish and again here's another picture of uh, Mr. Lennox Alastair Lennox who standing there very proudly in his sergeant major's uniform uh, most definitely because it means he's had a long career in the army he most definitely should have known better yes I that would be correct. Um, and I believe that was the man, that man had um, fraudulent, char fraudulent charges against him in the courts in Belfast. Oh, Mr. Lennox did? Mr. Lennox, yes. Oh, Lord. Okay. And uh, what do you know what those charges were, Kevin? Uh, I think it was for several counts of making uh, social fraudulent social welfare claims. All right, I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right, Kevin. So um, let's let's bring us back now to the article in the Roscommon Herald that actually um, raised the need to produce this short video because uh, with the mainstream media continuously, ro you know, rowing in behind a lot of the shenanigans that are going on in our so-called justice system, um, this is one of the ways that we can help address redress the balance and get the public to understand what's really going on. So so tell us uh, what happened in Strokestown Court a couple of weeks ago, Kevin. Well, the long and short of it is that I was convicted of a, an offence that, that I was not, wasn't even charged with in front of the courts. The charge that you were accused of, that you were before the court, you were cleared of that in the yes, court? Yes, yeah, in the court, yes. Yeah, Judge Finnegan actually said there's no evidence yes. to prove this charge. Yes. So technically, you should have been allowed to walk out of there, of over course, and done with. Of course, yes, yes. But, but instead, something else happened, right? He decided, when looking at the video, I think I, I, we brought it up before, that I put my hands on he, what he calls Ian Gordon, who we thought at the time was rolling around in the ground, touching his privates. That's right. Um, that he, on that trespass, whoever that trespass was, on, on that trespasser's shoulder, who the judge alleged was Ian Gordon, and therefore he convicted me on that offence. Well, 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 yeah, but just a minute, Kevin. Hold, hold on a second. If I, uh, if I accuse you of stealing apples and I produce a video that just shows you walking around the grocery store, yeah, and then you pick up an orange, which is a different charge, right? Surely I can't just, just feel, well, we'll just forget about the apples and we'll just charge him with, even though they're completely, two different, completely assault, different assaults. I mean, the one is an assault causing harm, absolutely. The, if, if it was true, the, the grasping of the, the testicles, that's an assault causing harm. That's right, yes. The other alleged assault, which we can all see here clearly on the video, is an, a defensive, and certainly there's no injury being caused to this person. No. You know, it's you. I, I, it, it seems to me you're, you're doing your best to restrain him from, from causing an assault yeah yes. on, on your on your colleague who was in the middle of that clutch of uh, of, of uh, security guards that's okay. right yes yes um, you would also like to comment on the column there by the Roscommon Herald first of all anyway 
the, uh, the, bunch, uh, the person that told the bunch of lies, as far as I'm concerned, that was in this column, he never put his name to uh, the report. To, to the article? No. So, so we've got, an, again, the amount of times this has happened, Kevin. So now you have an unknown reporter yeah. putting an article out in the public domain without claiming credit for it. And I can almost certainly assure you, Kevin, the reason for that, and I bet if you try to find out who it was, you won't, you'll hit a brick wall because they know that they may be liable uh, for slander or for um, you know for misrepresentation yeah. if they're identified. Well, if that's the case, we'll have to take the editor of the Ross Common Herald uh, into question about this. Mm -hmm. Also, as I said there, he, he, w he wouldn't put his name uh, uh, to the column. But then, did, uh, did, a, did a liar ever stand behind his lies? Yes. No, no good no. point. Good point, Kevin. I would also like to bring about, and I, I just want to clear it with people, he has a post of course that I call Ian Gordon an orange bastard. Now, as I said to, in the court to Ian Gordon, did you ever see me before? He said he never did. I never saw him before. I didn't know That's what right. creed, nationality, what religion he was. I didn't even know his accident, ac his accent. So how in the name of God could I have called him an orange bastard? Very good point, Kevin, because at the point, as a matter of fact, there's one part on the video where I can hear you clearly saying trespasser to him. Uh, that's the only uh, clear word that we hear you say. Um, get off the property, you trespasser. Um, now, but the point is very well made, Kevin. If, you, if you'd never met him before, if he hadn't even spoken to you at that point, and again, it was only after the fact. As a matter of fact, I remember also uh, Mr. Lennox, uh, when, he's, when, when he's asked, is he not ashamed for what he's doing to other I fellow Irishmen? Yeah. At that point, I think that's the first clear you know, I I indicator that you're not dealing with, uh, you know, ordinary Irishmen. Even Irishmen from the north would have a Northern Irish accent. Accent, but clearly he's the one who says no. He said, "I'm not Irish. I'm British." Uh, so yeah, your point is well taken, Kevin. That happened much, much later in the the alleged conversation between you and Mr. Gordon. Uh, so it, it appears, Kevin, that we've got yet another case of a judge, an Irish judge, deciding to just make up the so-called law as he goes along but uh, you, you know I, I mean as a matter of fact if I, if I c could remind you of this Kevin uh, when you were charged with uh, violating a court order you were charged with contempt of court and spent several months in jail That's subsequently right. That's right. Um, on that occasion we informed the High Court of two main things the first one was that the judge in question which was Justice Leonie Reynolds a High Court judge and daughter of a previous Taoiseach, that she did not have the jurisdiction to jail you. That's and right, yes. Yeah, and uh, we sent in documents to this effect. Uh, we won't go into all the details here, but if people are interested, please go to the Integrity Ireland website and look at the Asseverations tab. We also notified that what had happened in Strokestown and Falsk in the first incident where you were assaulted, Kevin, was 100% unlawful by our own Irish laws That's and right. those were sent in as well and they weren't completely ignored but Judge Leonie Reynolds said she was ignoring them and as a result uh, we went ahead and lodged criminal complaints against her but as you as we all know now and it seems to have happened to you again now in front of the Strokestown judge um, that he just went ahead and just made it up as he went along even though what he was doing was in violation of his oath of office and his code of conduct and indeed of the law and the constitution. That's correct, yes.